I'm going to wrap up the three-part tutorial on the amplitude and compression group of effects here in Audition. I'm going to cover the envelope effects. If you want to follow along, just open up these guys. I'm going to open up 0703 compression by going to the Working Files Multitrack Sessions folder and opening up that multitrack session. And open up the Instrumental Mix. That's inside Working Files Music. Just too hard to find. There it is. So. We're going to work with something called an envelope. To find those guys, go to Effects, Amplitude and Compression, and there are the two envelope effects, Fade Envelope and Gain Envelope, and both of them are process effects, which means you can apply them directly to a clip here inside the Waveform Editor or the Waveform Display of the Editor Panel, but you cannot apply them inside the Effects Rack. These guys are not real-time effects. You can't just play them and listen to their effect. You've got to apply them to have them work. So I'm going to open up the Gain Envelope, both of them work very similarly. I'll just start with the gain envelope. And this is what it does. If you look carefully, you might see that it added a little yellow line across the file. And this is the so-called gain envelope, sometimes called a volume envelope or an amplitude envelope. These things, these envelopes, so-called envelopes, use what are called keyframes. Now, if you've worked with a video editor like Premiere Pro or an effects editor like After Effects, you have worked with keyframes to the max. You could do them in your sleep. But if you have worked only with audio, you might not have encountered keyframes. So I'll be explaining keyframes in a moment. But just keep in mind that that's a concept that's usually reserved for video and special effects editing. But here it is inside an audio editor. Now, this little envelope allows you to change the volume or the amplitude of this file over time. You can make it get quieter or louder during the entire clip, not just change the volume for the whole clip overall. But the thing is, the only time you need to use this is if you're editing only this clip, and this clip will not be in a multi-track session, because the multi-track session gives you the same options built into the multi-track session. Let me show you what I mean. I'll go over here to the multi-track session that I made, which is just one file, because I just want to demonstrate how this works. If you look at this clip inside this multi-track session, lo and behold, there's that same yellow line. They call it the volume envelope here, but volume, envelope, gain, whatever, it's all the same thing. And right below it is the pan envelope. So you can adjust the panning left and right in a stereo track like this. So not only do you have these guys inside each clip inside a multi-track session, each track has its own envelopes as well. If you click this disclosure triangle next to this little drop-down menu, lo and behold, it says show envelopes. And here I've got the pan and volume envelopes checked. You can uncheck them or check them as you wish. And the default is just volume, but I've got volume and pan here, which are really the two main things that you would use anyway. So here you can control volume or gain or amplitude, whatever you want to call it, inside an individual clip as well as panning in that clip. Plus, you can also control volume and panning within the entire track, no matter how many clips you have inside that track. So keep in mind that it really is redundant. There's no reason for you to use the gain in a clip and then bring that clip into a multi-track session when here you can do it and it's non-destructive here. Any changes here won't affect the clip, but any changes you make over here will change the clip, so-called destructive editing. So just keep that in mind. Now here we are back inside this clip. We've got the gain envelope selected, so we want to add some keyframes. And keyframes change volume over time. You just hover your cursor over the yellow line and you get to add a keyframe. Click. Now notice when I click, if I hold down my mouse for a second, it says 0 dB. 100%. What the heck does that mean? Because if I hold that down, it says 0 dB there, but then up in the upper right corner here is 0 dB, and this guy says 0 dB. So what is going on here? It is kind of confusing. This 0 dB here means that that's the original volume level of this clip. Whatever volume level it was, it always starts out its life as 0 dB. And notice this, it says 100%. That means it's 100% of the original volume level. You could have a very, very quiet clip and it would still be 100% 0 dB. Or a very loud one, same thing, 0 dB, 100%. So this is basically a starting point. You start at the actual original volume level of the clip and then you can change it. This little heads up display says 0 dB and that is currently the same thing. It's the starting point of the clip. But if you change this, if you increase the volume like that, it'll snap back to zero. So it's saying, okay, yeah, you started at zero. Now that you've changed it, we're going to call the revised version zero dB. And that can be confusing because this won't suddenly change when you start dragging it up and down. So this guy just sort of snaps to zero after you've done raising the volume. And finally, this in the upper right-hand corner here is not really dB. 
it should say dBFS here, decibels below full scale. So this is just says how loud this thing is relative to the loudest it can be and still sound good without clipping the audio. So this guy, for instance, right there is like minus four dB. There was four decibels below full scale, if you can follow that. So we're gonna go back to this guy. I'll show you this again. So I've added a keyframe and it says zero dB. Now I wanna add another keyframe. So keyframes mark the beginning and the end of a change. So this is the beginning of the change, this is the end of a change. If I drag this guy down, notice that the decibel level starts changing, minus, minus, minus. Keep on dragging it down to silence. Actually, it'll get to negative infinity when I get to the bottom. So right now, if I were to play this, it's gonna quickly drop off. So I'll bring the current time indicator here, here we go. So that's how keyframes work. They mark the beginning of a change and the end of a change. And then Audition interpolates the difference between the two and gradually goes from one to the other. That's a fairly standard way of changing things, changing properties inside video editors and special effects editors. And here you can do it with audio and pan as well. So let me just raise this guy up like that. Now notice I can get it as far as I go, it stops at plus 15 dB. That's the highest difference you can make using the gain envelope. I can only go 15 dB here as well, but I can raise it in 15 dB increments. So raise it once, raise it again, raise it again. But the envelope just maxes out at 15 dB louder. 15 dB louder, if you look at it, is about 500%, which means four and a half times more than the original, something like that. 200% right there is six dB, and that's double the original volume. And then if I go up nine, it'll be 300%, 12, 400%, and so on. So I'll just go up like that, and we'll see how that sounds. So you can see that you can increase volume or decrease volume. Now let's say I want to drop it. Got a little section that I wanted to bring up and now I want to drop it. I can bring it down like so. I'm not sure if you heard that little buzz when it got the full volume. That's obviously too loud. You can see the red marks down here, meaning it was clipping, but I'm just doing this as an example to show you how you can raise it up and drop it down. Now those changes in volume to your ears probably did not sound abrupt. And so the fact that there are these little hard edge corners here may not be a problem, but there is an option if you want to make it really gradual and smooth, and that's called spline curves. If you click on spline curves, it makes it a much more gradual process. But notice that wherever you put your keyframe, it doesn't necessarily equate to exactly where you want the volume level to be. It kind of hovers in the vicinity of it, depending on how you drag it around. If I drag it to the right, I can't go past the keyframe down here. And notice, I've got this guy down to minus 6 dB, but this curve is not minus 6 dB. It's still above the original volume level. It really only gets to the original volume level way over here. So if you really want to drop it down, you've got to pull it like that to get it down to some minus level. When you use spline curves, the rules kind of change in terms of getting the volume exactly where you want it. You've got to kind of overshoot to be able to get it where you want it. So I'll just bring this guy down like that. And we'll listen to that. So it's a much more gradual, and you can see it just tapers off forever. And, and since it's tapering off forever, my goodness, do you want your audio to drift all the way like that? Well, probably not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little selection here. And when you make the selection, notice how the curve now fits in the selection. See how it's kind of trying to bounce up and down? Because these guys are so close together now inside the selection, it doesn't really work that well. Let me just undo all those guys. I'll go back to default and I'll add a keyframe here, add another keyframe, add another keyframe, another one. And I'll bring these guys up a little bit. I'll turn on spline curves now. There we go. And now you can see that it's a little easier to control and you can control the fade within a selection. So if I want to tighten it up, I can tighten it up like that. So this is good if you want to fade just part of the video up, you could just select the part that you want to fade up and there it is, or you want to fade it up and down. That's how you can bring it up and down. If you're fading it up or fading it down, that's called fade, and we're going to talk about the fade envelope here in a second. There are a whole bunch of presets, which I think are superfluous. I see no reason to use these things. I mean, really, you can do these keyframes on your own. You don't need the presets to do it, but let me just show the whole clip, and I'll show you how the preset looks. I mean, really, how difficult is it for you to put a few keyframes to accomplish that? Maybe you wouldn't want to do that anyways, but that's one of the presets. I guess they just felt obligated to put presets in here, even though you probably would never use them in terms of you know what you've got here. You can do most of these things on your own. So that's how you apply the gain envelope, which starts at 0 dB, lets you go up 15 dB and drop down to negative infinity or silence. 
The other envelope is called the fade envelope. I'll go to effects, amplitude and compression, fade envelope. The fade envelope, let me go back to the default here. The fade envelope starts right there at zero dB and you can't go any louder. The purpose of the fade envelope is to fade. So you can fade from zero down here and click and bring it up to 100%. So you can fade in and if you want to then fade out, you click over here and fade out, bring it down like that. So you can fade in and fade out. You don't just have to fade out. You can do fade in and fade out. And there are some presets here that you know look very similar when you can smooth fade in or smooth ends that does exactly what I just did here as a preset. Let me go back to the default. I want to show you one more thing. When you apply a keyframe, it's not locked in time. You can move the keyframe wherever you want. So if you want to start the fade there and then say have it go here like that, and then you go, well, wait a minute. I really don't want the fade to start there. I want it to start over here. Easy enough, just drag it over. Or if you want to get rid of a keyframe, how do you get rid of the keyframe? You can click on the keyframe and drag it off the screen and it goes away. This keyframe, for example, if I drag it up or drag it all the way down off the screen, it goes away. If I click on a keyframe, press delete, it too goes away. So that's how you could deal with errant keyframes if you want to get rid of them. So that's how you use envelopes, fade and gain envelopes, inside clips, inside the waveform editor. Keeping in mind that you can do the same thing on a non-destructive way inside the multi-track session.